All right, good afternoon. My name is Mr. Williams. I'm going to get your unbiased attention and your cell phones down and all eyes are bright. Period. And our simple topic for today is going to be history of technology in the classroom. Very simple. I'm going to run through that. So the first question is, we first got to understand what is technology. Technology is machinery and equipment developed for the application of scientific knowledge. So simply what does that mean is, it doesn't have to use power to be technology. Your pencil is technology. Your pen is technology. Um, but of course, things that use power also technology. So looking at this, the first classroom really will go back about 250 years ago to the first colonial classroom. And in this setting, you can see there was no chalkboard, no dry erase board. The teacher basically gave lectures. There was no visual aid. You learned pretty much by ear. And you can imagine how hard that must have been for a lot of people who need to see things visually. Uh, but even today, we still do that in college campuses, you know, just lecture. Uh, one of the first visual aids that came into the classroom were called horn books. They were used to learn the alphabet, nursery rhymes, uh, and more importantly, the Lord's Prayer. So this was the first visual aids that were brought about in the classroom. Each student would have their own to take home with them as a visual aid. Next, the chalkboard was invented by a college professor, professor in Scotland. And the first chalkboards were green. Well, no, they were black. But after a while, they realized that it was hard to see on blackboard, so they began to paint them green. And that was a little bit more easy on the eye. So, with this being introduced, you had a little bit more visual aid. It was easy for the teacher to explain things for those who needed to see it with their natural eye. Next, we got the magic lantern. And this was introduced into the classroom in the late 1800s. It didn't use a light bulb. It didn't use a socket. It used pretty much oil. Uh, it, was a, it was a lamp pretty much on the inside. And what they would do, they would light this lamp. It would throw off light and push it glass slide through it to project whatever they're trying to show on that. And that's pretty much an old time projector, just didn't use it in power. Uh, beginning in the 1900s, they were still using chalkboard slates. The student, each individual student, instead of using paper, they would use slates. And they would work math problems or have on that. Well, with the mass production of pencil and paper, the slates were soon pushed aside and students began to use pencil and paper to use their work on. And instead of erasing and having to start over, they could now keep their work, take it home with them as, a, again, another visual aid. Beginning in the 1940s, we have the ballpoint pen. Now, before this, you would use what you see, the little small thing of ink and the pen, and you have to you know, dip the pen in there and write with it. And if you ever tried to do this, very, very difficult. Um, and after so long, once you begin to run out of ink, you actually begin to start tearing the paper. So it was very inconvenient, and it took a lot of years to learn how to really perfect that. Uh, but again, they introduced the ballpoint pen. And many teachers believe that the pen would never uh, replace the pencil and paper. And that, that can be still argued today. But with the ballpoint pen, a lot of teachers believed it was a waste of money because after the students were done writing with them and the ink ran out, they would just throw them away. And they thought that wasn't a good method to use, you know, as to the quill and ink where you can keep using that forever until it grows. Uh, in the 1960s, the, the overhead projector was introduced into the classroom. Uh, it was made previously before then, but it was mainly used by businessmen. Uh, who wanted to showcase things, but teachers started to use them. And you see we uh, continued to use them until recent years, uh, until the projector was introduced into the classroom. Uh, starting in the 1970s, we started using handheld calculators and computers. Uh, beforehand, if you ever seen the movie Hidden Figures, the calculator was really the size of what this classroom was. We used these big devices to calculate small problems. But now we've got handheld calculator. And down in the bottom corner you'll see the printer machine. And if you ever run across uh, a copy machine, you ever run across older teachers may hear them refer to it as a Xerox. 
uh, largest is I need a Xerox instead of make me a copy. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is the modern classroom. And you see, uh, looking at the primitive classroom and the modern classroom, a lot has changed. And whenever you use technology in the classroom, it makes the job of the teacher easy. Uh, where the teacher had to stand up all day and lecture, now they can take more breaks and because they have more visual aids inside of the classroom, be it posters and the Promethean board and all of those things. And it makes, you know, a lot of hands-on for the student. And here are some of the things that I didn't mention, which are notable mentions. The typewriter, uh, the radio, the television, and at one in the top right corner, that's called a slide rule. It was used to work uh, problems that you're probably working out of the two trigonometry. But all of these things aided in the classroom, the typewriter, the radio, and the TV, PBS. We used to watch PBS a very educational program. Radio lessons were taught over the radio. And if you notice, I didn't put the cell phone up there because the cell phone has not aided much in our learning in the classroom. More of a distraction <laughs> than it is learning to. Okay. All right, that's cool.